Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey everyone, in this video today, I'm heading out to shoot a uh, roll or two through a camera. That was the one that kind of started it all for me, and that is the original Pentax 645. So on this channel before, I've spoke about the Yashica Mat 124G and how that was kind of the film camera that got me back into film. But a couple years before that, the original Pentax 645 was the first camera that I purchased. And it's always a camera that I've loved. I own the 645N, I was a huge fan of that. But the original 645 was one that I had like a, a bit of a mixed relationship with. The camera itself I loved, but the first scans I got back from it were really bad. And at the time, I didn't understand that it was the, the scanning that made the images look the way that they did. And I just thought it was the camera or it was my technique or something like that. So I actually ended up selling the 645 and then didn't get into film for a couple years after that. But uh, recently, I've invested in a bunch of Pentax 645 glass for the Fuji GFX. And these original 645 bodies are still very affordable. So I decided to pick one up. I found a really good deal on this one. Uh, so gonna get out today just to run a roll through this because I haven't used it yet. So figured I'd bring you along, do a little bit of like a mini review on this camera in the field as well. And then also just wanna talk a little bit about uh, like a connection that you can have with gear and why gear does matter. The plan for this trip was to basically do a big loop, starting where I am, heading down eventually to the coast, and then looping back around. No set route, just kind of picking through smaller towns, villages, country roads, and seeing what I can find. Basically just getting out and having some fun with this camera. I decided to load up some T-Max 400 to shoot with. One of my favorite black and white films, I actually haven't shot with it in quite a while, and that's what all the images are throughout this edit. And I actually ended up going out for a second day as well and shot some more and used a different developer. So some of those images are throughout this edit as well. So, came across this really cool old diner the other day when I was driving past here. Shot a little bit of it then digital. Uh, obviously raining, so not amazing conditions right now, but I think I'll still shoot it because uh, the front here is pretty neat. Could be cool in black and white, just with all this reflective paneling, but definitely not something that you uh, would expect to see here in England. Love the Elvis. So the Pentax 645 is definitely a pretty common film camera. A lot of people know about this one. And it's also like a no frills camera. It's not really that exciting in my opinion. The reason I love it is because it's just capable of producing great images, uh, comfortable to use, really easy to use, and it just kind of stays out of the way. And like I said at the start, I still think this is one of the best value buys for someone who wants to jump into medium format from 35 millimeter, just when you take into account the price, the performance, and then also 645 being a great format for that. Okay, so I did want to just talk quickly about the original 645. So, like I said, I used to own the N. Uh, the biggest difference really with the N is that it had autofocus. This is obviously just a manual focus camera. And then it had some updated controls as well. So it had like physical dials instead of uh, what the original had, which was this like digital display uh, with these buttons, which is kind of ugly, kind of inconvenient, and something that's probably never really gonna be cool but also not a huge deal. It's something that's very workable. Uh, but the nice thing is with the original, since it's a manual focus camera, is the screen on it, the focusing screen is quite a bit nicer. It has a micro prism and a split screen for focusing. Whereas the N, since it's autofocus, didn't have anything. So uh, wasn't as nice to, to focus. So if you're thinking of picking one of these up and you, you aren't bothered by autofocus, I would definitely go for this older one because you'll save some cash and then it's also nicer to use with manual lenses. Anyways, um, we should get to the coast. Cross our fingers that this rain stops. Just found this fun little spot here at a uh, little pull-off rest stop. I don't know why these in England here, these are so fascinating, these cafes, they always look like they're built in these portables. Kind of fun. We're shooting with this weather today. 
So it's been a couple of years since I've shot with the Pentax 645, and this day kind of brought back some memories from the road trip that I did out to the American West, shooting primarily with the 645N. And just a really enjoyable camera to use. And it's like the simple things, obviously it's an SLR, but it just handles really nice. And then the auto wind feature, again, nothing crazy, but it does almost just create this like point and shoot style experience. I forgot how quick I get through a roll of film with this camera. I don't know if it's like the auto wind and just how it handles that makes me shoot a little quicker with it. But uh, shooting with the 75mm 2.8, I have the 45 and the 75 for this camera. Uh, the 45 I use mostly on the GFX just because on the crop sensor it's more of like a uh, 35, it's not as wide, but on uh, 645 film it's a little bit too wide for my liking, so 75mm is just perfect. Love this lens. Uh, T-Max 400 is what I have loaded in, and then shooting with an 8th Pro Mist actually, which is something I never ever do with film, only with digital, but I had this in the camera bag and I figured, why not? Could be a good mix especially with T-Max, although it is pretty flat out, so I kind of have a feeling I might not even notice any difference at all. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish this frame and then load up another roll and see if we can get a couple more towns before the rain picks up too much. So just gotta take a quick break here now to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. And you know, as a creative who is often wearing multiple hats, one of the things I've really enjoyed about Squarespace over the years is just the ease of use and the simplicity and also the wide range of templates they have to choose from. So for example, if you want to build a photography website, just pick a template, upload your images, and then there's just these really simple intuitive features like being able to click on images and drag them around to reorder and resequence that just saves you so much time and headaches. So check out squarespace.com today for a free trial, test it out, and when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below, which is squarespace.com slash Kyle McDougall. It'll save you 10% off first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, let's get back into it. So this is pretty cool. They're tearing it down now, unfortunately, but uh, might be a shot or two here. So after doing this edit and looking at the images I used, I did actually end up using the 45 mil more than I thought I would, which was a little surprising, but I think a lot of that also has to do with just environment. So 75 mil is what I shot a lot with in the desert and maybe this wider focal length works a bit better here in England. But the nice thing about the Pentax lens lineup, just like the camera, there's nothing that exciting about it, but there's just a lot of good options that work well and they're also very affordable. So the Pentax 645 is by no means the perfect film camera. In some ways, it's probably lacking features that some people need, so it's definitely not for everyone. But for me personally, it's just a camera where the simplicity and the performance often leads to some of my most enjoyable days out shooting. Okay, so that's a wrap. Pretty big day actually, surprising. See how the images are. Hopefully there's some images uh, there the camera worked. I feel confident that there should be. Regardless, fun to get out. And shoot with this Pentax 645 again. Shoot some T-Max and just like, yeah, the, uh, these days of photography are so important where you just go out and experiment and have fun. And that kind of uh, brings me to this thing I mentioned at the start, this like gear doesn't matter, this thing that people preach sometimes. I wanted to make a video about it, but I, I like a separate one, but I figured it maybe tie into this quickly a little bit. Um, and I think it's important to talk about because there is like people can get preachy at times with this like gear doesn't matter. It's about the craft and it's about, uh, you know, um, how you pursue your images and growing as an artist and all this kind of stuff. And I agree with that completely. Like I think if you're trying to uh, improve uh, your your images from like an artistic standpoint and just from uh, like a strength standpoint, uh, as long as you have like the the tools that meet your like technical needs for whatever photography you do, you know, switching from one camera to, to another, one lens to a higher end lens or whatever it is, isn't going to have this like drastic impact to the point where your audience probably notices. So um, in that sense, gear, I guess, doesn't matter after a certain degree, you know, just having the tools that you need. But 
I think the problem with those statements is that people often apply them as like a blanket statement, like they apply to everyone, assuming that everyone is looking to get the same thing out of their photography as one another, which isn't the case. And I think it's important as an artist to get like really clear on why you even do photography in the first place. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to want to become like the next greatest artist or create some incredible work that's going to be recognized worldwide or whatever it is. Like if that's what you're striving for, that's completely fine. But you can also just be someone who picks up a camera and goes out because it's something that brings you a lot of happiness and that you enjoy. Or someone who wants to collect 200 different film cameras because you love um, all the different details on them and fixing them and tinkering with them and, and, and whatever. Like I don't think... Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with like just being obsessed with camera gear and having a ton of fun using it. If that's what you want to do and that's what brings you enjoyment, then I, I think that's what you should you should chase. For me personally, it's kind of split. When I go to work on like uh, project work, I just want kind of the tools to stay out of the way. I want to use the one that I know and then I don't even really think about it. But uh, on the flip side, I love going out for days like this, just playing around and grabbing a camera that I connect with, like the 645, the Pentax, and just purely having fun and experimenting uh, and just enjoying the process, essentially. So nothing wrong with gear, um, owning multiple cameras, talking about cameras, whatever it is. I think just uh, what matters most is like doing whatever makes you happiest in photography. If that's the art, if that's gear, if that's both, whatever the balance is, that's what you should should go for. Anyways, look at this nice golden light. It's like I set that up to close out the video. It's actually pretty cool. Fluky. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching and sticking around through it. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you hopefully next week. Chat soon.